Before making the chair, spend a few minutes getting used to manipulating the scene. Middle mouse to rotate, using shift and control to strafe and zoom the scene. Then reload the startup file to reset the scene. Then focus on the cube and switch to front orientation to make sure it's facing the right way before starting. Switch to edit mode using the mode selector or tapping the tab key. And then add the first set of loop cuts, clicking the loop cut and slide button. These want to be added front to back and side to side initially, which create a set of center lines that equally divide the mesh. Create another set of cuts, this time holding the control key down to snap. Try and make sure the cuts are equidistant from the edge all around the mesh. So keep an eye on the bottom left of the 3D view in the 3D view menu header for the edge slide value. With the control key held down, when it reads 0 0.5, left click to set the cut. This structure is relatively important because the legs and the back of the chair will be extruded from the resulting faces of all these loop cuts. So spend a bit of time trying to make sure that they're approximately equal. Once done, reset the orientation again to front just to make sure the mesh is facing the right way. At this point, limit selection to visible will probably need to be enabled to prevent distraction from other lines that can be seen through the mesh. With that done, Set selection mode to face and then multi select, shift right click a set of faces along the back edge of the chair. Reposition the scene to allow for an extrusion. Then click the extrude region button or press the E key to extrude. A set of faces will appear. Right click to deselect and then left click drag the blue handle of the widget upwards holding the control key down to snap to the grid. Alternatively, use the translate properties and type a vector value into the Z axis. Next, establish the height of the seat or the depth of the seat by selecting all the surfaces on the underside of the mesh using circle select to make a group selection. Make sure any previous selections are deselected. So deselect all. Use circle select to reselect the underside of the chair again. Again to make a group selection. And using shift control, click hold the blue arrow of the widget and pull upwards to reduce the depth of the chair. Or use a translate value again. Once the seat's depth has been set, the next thing to do will be to extrude the leg. So on the underside of the mesh again, select the corner faces, shift right click to multi-select, then click the extrude individual button or press the E key. A set of new faces will appear again, right click to deselect, then holding the control key down, left click the blue widget arrow and pull downwards. Release control and the mouse button to confirm. This then completes the construction part of the process. Next will be materials and textures. The material properties button is usually hidden from view by default, so Move the mouse over the border between the 3D view and the main properties panel until the double-headed arrow appears. 
left click, hold and drag to expand the properties panel outwards to reveal the material button. Click it to reveal material properties and then change the name of the material that's there already, which is the default cube material. Use the color picker to change the diffuse color. Tap enter to confirm or left click elsewhere on screen. Click the texture button to the right of material button. Change the texture type to image and movie. Select both from the preview and then click the open button to browse to and select the image to assign. Then click open image to load the bitmap into the material. Scroll down the properties panel. Change the mapping coordinates from generated to UV. Scroll back up and change the texture channel's name. It's worth noting that editing and assigning properties for materials can generally be done in any order, but they all need to be present for the material to work properly. Having said this, although the material is set up and assigned to the object, changing viewport shading makes no difference at this point. So the mesh will appear untextured, although the chair can be rendered as a textured static image. This is fixed by unwrapping or UV mapping the mesh. This is usually done in the UV image editor. Click the editor type button in the outliner and select UV image editor from the list of options available. Switch to edit mode and then select the entire mesh. This may need to be done twice to deselect any previous selections. And from the UV image editor, click the browse image button and select the previously loaded image from the list available. The default mapping at this point has each face of the object mapped one to one to the image, something that can be seen when individual faces are selected. They all occupy the same space, basically the entire texture. The most straightforward and often easiest way to unwrap the mesh is to do it based on selection. This essentially means selecting groups of faces and then UV mapping them as units. So it's quite possible to work around the mesh, selecting groups of faces and wrapping them as individual units across the entire object. A more direct and manual approach to unwrapping objects that allows a greater control at the expense of reduced management of the overall UV map when the entire object is selected. For example, when the back of the chair is selected and then another element is added to that selection, they often overlap, which makes it difficult to edit the UVs. A better way instead is to mark seams and take advantage of the way edges can split or divide a mesh into sections that can be logically unwrapped. Work around the mesh, strategically selecting and marking edges as seams in a way that will unwrap as a flat map section in the UV image editor. For example, around the top of each of the legs, marking them as seams, and then unwrapping the entire object to check progress. Remember to remove any light objects by either deleting or moving them using layers, otherwise they interfere with the ability to see the edges of the mesh because of shadows and shading. This is also true of the types of objects that might get in the way of the process. So using layers again, or delete, remove objects as appropriate from a scene. Remember that when marking seams on an object like a chair, to place them at the underside of each leg in order for it to unwrap as a flat map without any distortion.
Be mindful to work around the mesh and double check for missing seam marks which will cause distortion. Edit and amend those as needed. Then once again select the entire mesh and then double check the seams that have just been marked have worked correctly and the map is laid out properly. Then rinse and repeat. Mark a seam along the back of the chair so that the back of the chair is separate from the seat of the chair. Then mark edges along the front of the seat to flatten that when it's unwrapped. Mark the seams. Deselect and then reselect all, which will show the previous unwrap. And then redo the UV map. Checking for progress. And then again, continue on marking the underside of the seat to isolate that. Mark seams. Select all. Unwrap. Double check progress again. This shows a large area of distortion around the back of the chair because the seams haven't been set out properly. So deselect everything. And then mark a set of seams down one side across the top and down the other side. Mark those as seams. Deselect, reselect, and then unwrap. This should result in a proper or neat UV map. With a map now available to make it easier to edit, toggle the UV editor full screen and then switch the selection mode to Island from the header menu. This helps select individual elements of the UV map without having to use border or circle or the other selection tools. Make some basic adjustments to the UV map. Toggle full screen back to the default layout so that any adjustments made to the UV map are seen in the 3D view. So selecting the UV for the back of the chair and moving that in the image editor, that movement is reflected in the main 3D view. The same for the underside of the chair, which is hidden from view, the seat and each of the legs. Check also that each of the UV sections is orientated correctly. Use the R key as would be done in the main 3D view to rotate a selection, left click to confirm. And then S key, again similar to the 3D view, and scale the entire map so it all fits inside the texture space. Make any final adjustments. Check the mesh. Make sure nothing is distorted or misaligned. Then toggle out of edit mode. And there we have a simple chair, textured and UV map.